After being stuck in Mario's shadow since the 80s, Luigi finally got a chance to claim the spotlight with his very own game, a game that despite being an unusual experience, is actually very well made. This is Luigi's Mansion for the GameCube, and without a doubt, this was definitely a great launch title for Nintendo's cube-shaped console. Luigi has received word that he's won a mansion in the contest, a contest that he never entered. When he arrives at his newly acquired mansion, he finds it filled with ghosts who have kidnapped his popular brother Mario. Moral of the story being, if someone tells you that you won a contest you never entered, it's a scam. Someone just wants your money, or in this case, to trap you in a painting. You'll notice right away that Luigi's Mansion is very different from what we've come to expect from Mario games. You don't jump on platforms or stomp on Goombas. In fact, you can't jump at all in this game. Instead, you use a flashlight and a vacuum cleaner to suck up ghosts, making your way to clearing out the mansion and saving Mario. In terms of visuals, Luigi's Mansion does a great job at showing off the graphical power of the GameCube. Now, there are some textures that aren't great, but the character models look really good especially compared to the N64 games of the previous generation. There's an impressive use of particle effects and lighting that was truly stunning in 2001. These graphics are very standard and basic today, but when this game released, we didn't always have graphics this beautiful, and it made Luigi's Mansion one of the GameCube's premier launch titles. The sound is also well done in a very deliberate and very Mario Universe fashion. The music is catchy and it fits with the game's settings, but it's not so creepy that you lose that famous Mario charm. However, you do start to realize that there isn't much variety in the way of music, and for some people, hearing the same tune a lot throughout the game could get old before you're halfway. But it's rather amusing to watch Luigi hum and whistle the game's theme, and his Mario calls as he searches for his brother. Also, the sound effects that are used have a nice mix of realistic and Mario Universe humor. Mario! <laughs> So no, this game is not a 3D platformer as some would expect. More accurately, it's an action-adventure game. It has elements of an action-adventure game, such as collecting items, and there are toads throughout the mansion who can give you advice, not much, and save the game. There is also a need for exploration in the game. You explore the mansion looking for useful items, and even secret passageways that may not be noticeable right away. It feels a bit like the original Resident Evil in that sense. There are also some puzzles to solve that are similar to Resident Evil, but a big portion of puzzle solving includes figuring out how to catch a particular portrait ghost. The portrait ghosts can't be captured until you first expose their weak points. Using your brain and your Game Boy Horror to search for clues, you can discover what each weakness is. And with the personalities of each portrait ghost, there's plenty of Nintendo-style charm in this game. Hmm. Why does he remind me of someone I know? Hmm. The Game Boy Horror also acts as your map, boo detector, communication device, and a place to keep track of items you've found and portrait ghosts you've caught. And there are plenty of portrait ghosts and non-portrait ghosts that amp up the challenge of the game. Some ghosts have their hearts protected by ice, there are invisible ghosts, I could go on. And the ghosts won't go down without a fight. Even as you're sucking them up, there's the added challenge of the ghosts trying to get away, which forces you to keep your lock on them until you drain them of their health. Their... afterlife health. Yeah. A few of the portrait ghosts have their own boss battles, and as you would expect, each one is harder than the last especially Bulasis, that can get pretty frustrating. But you can't progress through the mansion without beating them. Now you may be thinking, wait, what was that you said about a boo detector? Well, at some point in the game, Luigi accidentally frees a bunch of boos, which adds catching all 50 of them to your list of tasks. They can only be found in rooms you've already cleared. 
and in keeping up with Mario Charm, Nintendo decided to give them all names that are a bunch of boo puns. It's a bit painful at times. And with the more stubborn boos, so is catching them. Hmm. <laughs> Eat boo, stay in one room, please! Controlling Luigi is done with a dual stick setup that can take time to really learn. The analog stick moves Luigi around while the C stick controls the aim of the flashlight and vacuum. It took some getting used to, especially if you were coming from the single stick era of the N64. But as a system selling launch title, it provided a great introduction to dual analog stick controls, which have since become the standard in practically every console game. And after getting used to it in this game, quite honestly I don't know how I would play a Luigi's Mansion game comfortably without a two stick setup now. Luigi's Vacuum is your main tool and weapon throughout this game. Along with sucking up ghosts, you can also use it to shake furniture around and see what's money! Sorry. The vacuum can also shoot fire, water, and ice. Those elements are used to combat elemental ghosts, but they also play a role in a lot of room-based puzzles such as lighting a candle or putting out a fire. Everything I mentioned makes for a memorable single-player experience. But a problem with this game is that the single-player mode is really all the game has to offer. Now you do unlock a mode called Hidden Mansion, but all that is is the same game on a harder difficulty. Otherwise, there aren't any other modes in this game at all, so any replay value this game may have depends solely on how much you would want to adventure through the Haunted Mansion again. And compared to other action-adventure games, it really doesn't last that long. Despite all that, this was a fantastic launch title for the GameCube that has since become a cult classic among Nintendo fans, many of whom, myself included, are excited beyond words for the 3DS sequel. It looks awesome! Although, and listen well Nintendo, I personally think that a Luigi's Mansion sequel would work better on the Wii U. Not just with HD graphics, but more with the control and immersion it would offer. A Wii U sequel could give the option of using dual analog controls which many fans of this game are used to, or motion controls on the gamepad or the Wii Remote and Nunchuck. And the gamepad could serve as the Game Boy Horror easily. It would make for a much more immersive Luigi's Mansion game. Maybe call it the Game Pad Horror. If you have thoughts about a Luigi's Mansion sequel on the Wii U, leave your thoughts in the comments section below. You may dislike this game's very existence, since it's far from being a traditional Mario game, but if you're a fan of Luigi and you have enough of an open mind to give it a try, there's plenty to love about Luigi's Mansion. This is the Nintendo Reviewer signing off and wishing you all a very happy Halloween.